Hello, everyone. It's uh, Friday, August the 20th. Uh, Very regretfully, I, 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 I am reporting to you. I don't want to wait until this September 10th date. I hope to be able to have you some additional news on Monday on that. Uh, absolutely, those that are compromised, and, uh, as we've said over and over, they should go immediately, immediately right now and get their, get their booster dose and everything. You know, if you're eight months or six months out from, from, uh, from taking your first dose and everything and you're compromised, with any kind of illnesses, you know, for that uh, have, have, you know, have attacked or can attack your immunities and everything, absolutely you ought to be going and getting vaccinated with the booster dose. We are still making progress. We have, we have over, the, over the last few days, we have, since Wednesday, we have gotten in the arms of folks 4,100 doses. That's pretty good. It's not good enough, but it's pretty good. You know, at least we're getting somewhere. Of those people, how many lives are we going to save? What's that worth? Somebody tell me, what's that worth? And with that, we've gotten now 90.4% of the 65 and olders. We've got 83.8% .8 of our 50 and olders. We are at 70.3% of all those that are eligible to take a shot from 12 and older. This really is a tremendous success story in this great state because this state, this state has some, some level of stubbornness. It's led to a lot of the good stuff that we're, it's led to a lot of good stuff that we've been able to accomplish through our lives. It's who we are. But to, for West Virginia to be at 90.4% of all 65 and older and 83.8% and, and of all the 50 and olders in the state of West Virginia is a whale of an accomplishment. And I salute all those that have worked so hard to make that possible. As far as vaccine eligibility, you know, it's 12 and older. The natural immunities, if you have had COVID and you may, be, you may have been told, well, I had it. I don't need to take the vaccine. I've had it. Well, that's probably what could very well happen. You could have had it because those natural immunities may help you some, but they will not be good enough. So absolutely, if you've just had it and you're thinking, well, I don't have to take the vaccine, you're wrong. That's all there is to it. Young people, young people, 12 to 35, we still are struggling with getting you vaccinated to the levels that we need. We need help from our parents and help from our grandparents there. All the COVID information is up on that, you know, on your, on the info line. You know, I've said over and over, you take advantage of the free testing, get tested, take advantage of this free testing. It's nothing to go get a test to see that you're not, you know, that you're not going to test positive. I thank Fruth, I thank Walgreens over and over. We have 21 outbreaks in, in our long-term care facilities, nine in the churches in nine counties. That's Cabell, Doddridge, Fayette. 
Kanawha, Mason, Putnam, Raleigh, Taylor, and Wayne counties. We have 35 inmates that have, have COVID right now. We have 28 staff cases. I encourage you over and over and over about giving blood. Like I said, our ticket, our ticket out of this is one thing. One thing and one thing. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, I'm going to do that last. There's some airport grants that I'm happy to announce today. You know, I'm a real believer that the airports are our heart, the heart of the community. You know, today we're approving a combined total of 444,000 in grant funding for airports across the state. There's 24 airports that will receive grants of 12,500 each that will combine for 300,000. These grants will be used for safety and infrastructure upgrades. In addition to airport funding, 125,000 in funds will be awarded towards airport rescue, aircraft rescue, and firefighting training. You know, there's two airports, Huntington Tri-State and Greater Cumberland Regional, that will receive special grants that, that could open up access to 343,000 in funding from the FFA. And uh, if you could just step back and think about what these airports do, you know, there's, there's, there's an impact study, an economic impact study of West Virginia's aviation industry identi that identified 10,000, 10,729 jobs that are related to our airports and a $1.63 billion of, uh, of business revenue that's attributed to the airport facilities or airport activities. Today, you know, I want, I want us all to, to stop just with a very somber, somber, you know, uh, semi-celebration and salute to another fallen soldier. You know, flags will be lowered in honor of Navy Fire Controlman First Class Bernard Raymond Wimmer of Princeton. He was a fallen soldier that is now being brought home and laid to rest. Tomorrow is the day of his memorial services, and absolutely, it's been a long time coming home. You know, this wonderful man that we've lost, you know, our first class controlman, Bernard Wimmer, was on the USS Oklahoma on December the 7th when it was attacked at Pearl Harbor. 429 crewmen lost their lives and Bernard Wimmer was one of them. You know, he was awarded the Purple Heart, the World War II Victory Medal, and the American Defense Medal. Today, he's being returned home. You know, his, his remains we're in a Honolulu cemetery, but now they have been taken up and accurately identified, and he's coming home. So our flags will fly at half mask, or half staff rather, across our state, and please remember this man and remember all of his family and remember absolutely all those that have given everything, given everything, so we have everything that we have today. I've said it over and over. We owe all, we owe all that we have to these great people that are now in all areas of the world and all those that we've lost all the way to. All those that we brought, bring home as our veterans, all those that we've lost and have given the ultimate sacrifice and all their great families. Remember, we owe everything we have to these people. And thank you, sir. Now, Again, in an effort to try to get you vaccinated, in an effort to try to tailor something that would maybe get a few more young people across the finish line, as well as, as do some uh, additional stuff that, uh, you, know, you know, that's been brought to my attention from our broadcasters and everything, you know, that maybe we ought to do something else with Baby Dog. So Baby Dog's with me today, and, and right here, don't you go to sleep now, you're on TV now. Okay, baby dog's sitting right with me, and, uh, and now in the next six weeks, beginning with registration on Monday, 
We're going to go out in the next six weeks. We're going to give five full scholarships per week, 30 total, to any higher education institution in West Virginia for ages 12 through 25. We're going to give away, in every week, we're going to give away a very high-end luxury sports car. We're going to give away four ATV side-by-sides or, you know, a top-of-the-line zero-turn lawnmowers. We're going to give away one custom fishing boat per month. We're going to give away a dream wedding, a dream wedding, $150,000 per week to someone that is, you know, for their dream wedding. They can spend the money however they choose to spend the money, you know, wherever they decide to spend the money, but for a dream wedding. We're going to give away gas, free gas for 10 years to two West Virginians per week. We're going to give away six season ticket packages to WVU Marshall sporting events. And we're going to give away five season ski lift, you know, tickets to, to individuals every week. The, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that we get this right, but we're giving away, you know, well, you know, the fishing boat is going to be either a bass boat or a pontoon boat. And, uh, and, and you know, I guess that just ha halfway cleans that up. But we're going to start our first official drawing on the will be done on August the 31st. We will start registration on Monday, August the 23rd. And on every Tuesday thereafter, we'll give away these prizes and everything for people that are vaccinated. You know, we will give away these prizes for the next six weeks. So if we can get a bunch more folks across the, across the finish line, we're giving away lots and lots and lots of scholarships here. So we got to get our young people vaccinated. We're giving away sports cars and ATVs and, uh, you know, tickets to our ball games and a, and a beautiful, you know, wedding for, for someone that, uh, you know, because so, we got to appeal to the young, to the young girls and, and everything to be able to do something there. And so a lot of good ideas that have come to me and we're going to, this will be, um, do it for baby dog round two. And so you got to handle this, okay, girl? <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, those who are previously registered, I'll remind you over and over, you have got to register again to be eligible. Those who are previously registered, don't just sit back and say, well, I'm already registered. Do it again. You've got to register again to be eligible. So, uh, so long and the short of it is we'll, we'll try to uh, incentivize more and more and more to get across the finish line. I hope everybody is, is smiling a little bit. We'll have a little bit more, a little bit more fun with this. And, and, uh, and Jordan, you come back to this little girl and, and make sure everybody knows that she, she loves you and just like I love you. And, uh, and try to try to stay as positive as you can possibly be through this. It's it's tough stuff. That's all there is to it. We're trying every way we possibly can to get as many across the finish line as we can. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Governor. Let's now go first today to retired Major General Jim Hoyer, the director of our Joint Interagency Task Force. Good morning. Uh, just like to reinforce a couple of points that the governor made and highlight with some some data. This is our fifth week in the row of steady increase in vaccinations. Uh, and as he pointed out, we had another milestone where over 65% of the 40 to 49 year olds have had one dose. But as the governor pointed out, it's not enough and it's not fast enough. Uh, the numbers are moving on us rapidly.
and on the right, uh, that was our where, how long it took us to get to our peak point in the last surge and look at where we are on the left with the orange. We, we in less than two weeks, will we'll be at the numbers uh, that we had at that high point. If we don't continue to work hard to get West Virginians vaccinated and, and blunt this for not just uh, what's left of this surge, which we may not be able to slow down significantly, but what's, what's to come next. So as the governor pointed out, uh, we really need to double down. We need to get folks vaccinated. Uh, those who are immunocompromised, believe they are immunocompromised, need to get out and get that third dose because we know it is significantly important to helping those folks going forward. A couple other points of data just to reinforce the governor's uh, points as to why we've got to get vaccinated. Our average case age is now dropping to 41 years of age. Our average death dropping to 74 years of age and our hospitalization uh, average age is dropping significantly now below 60 years of age. So West Virginia, uh, we wouldn't be asking you to do this if it wasn't important. Please go out and get vaccinated. It is the best line of defense that we have to address this uh, surge here and to prevent future death and hospitalization, for reduce the number of deaths and protect the integrity of our hospitals. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Secretary Bill Crouch with the DHHR and Dr. Ayn Amjad, our state health officer, are also joining us today and are available for questions. Dr. Clay Marsh, our coronavirus czar, had a prior engagement today. He will rejoin us on Monday. We'll now go to questions from members of the media. The first today from Mark Curtis with Next Star Media. Uh, greetings to everybody. I'm in a hospital waiting room having some tests done. Nothing to worry about. Um, first of all, I'm glad to see Baby Dog back and that we have another incentive program targeting our youth. I know I suggested that a few briefings ago. I'm glad to see it and hope it's a big success. My question is this, Governor and staff members, is there a way to tier the masking mandate? Let's say we have a mask mandate for all counties that are in the orange and in the red and maybe the gold too, and that you would have no mask mandate in counties that are yellow and green. That way it creates an incentive for those counties that are red and orange to get more people tested, more vaccinated and bring their numbers down and reduce their color and eliminate the mask mandate that way. Is it possible to do that? Let me take this, Mark. Uh, you know, uh, another idea that we've discussed and we're discussing all the time, all, all kinds of different alternatives and everything, Without any question, without any question, it's a good thought, and, uh, and and it's surely something that's on the table, and and you know we're we're just hanging on you know as long as we possibly can to try to keep everybody together, but uh, but you know th this this is something that over the weekend there'll be a whole lot more discussion. We'll see where we stand and everything, but it's a good thought. All right, thank you, Mark. Next to Aaron Williams with WBOY. Good morning. Sorry, I uh, got the hit the unmute button there. Governor and panel, uh, my question is related to masks in schools. Um, you've talked again today about leaving those decisions to parents and local officials. Um, I, I'd love to hear from you, Governor, and as many of the panel members as possible. If you were sending a, a young child back to school um, this year, a, a child that, that's too young to be vaccinated, um, would, would you put them in a mask? Heading them, uh, sending them back to school, and um, if you could explain why or why not, that'd be appreciated. Thank you. Well, to be you know, and and again, I'm not going to dodge any question whatsoever. Um, I've got a lot of knowledge, and I've been given a lot of knowledge from from the medical team and the medical experts. Uh, You've got to evaluate just this, and, and, and this is all there is to it. You know, from, from your child's standpoint, is this going to have a, is a child really going to feel, uh, I mean, is it, going, is it going to cause them issues that could impact them psychologically and all kinds of things like that? 
you know, versus is there, is there real information that would say to us that they're going to be safer? You know, right now, right now that information in, in my book, and again, you know me well enough to know that I don't dodge anything. Right now that information is not clear enough for me to move towards this moment saying I would put my child in a mask and send that kid to school. You know, so with that though, every day that goes by, we get closer and closer and closer to a situation to where the safety outweighs a negative impact because we have more data. But, but I don't know how to answer it. I don't know how, no, I just don't know how to answer it except to just say just this. If I decided that, that in my mind that I felt like that my child would be better off to have a mask on in school, I'll put a mandate on the entire state. That's all there is to it because I don't want to ever think that I'm going to slight another child because it's not my child. There's no way, there's just no way. So right now, it is, it is too much of a toss up, too much of a toss up to know that absolutely clear cut enough that we should be doing it. All right, thank you, Aaron. Next to Paul Mullen with WCBC. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, panel. Um, I want to go back to something Dr. Marsh said about the spread of the Delta variant being more like spreading chicken pox. And I've seen numbers to where the spread of the uh, variant has uh, increased from maybe one person giving it to two to one giving it to as many as nine people. Do we uh, know if this would possibly spread through a ventilation system more easily than the original version of COVID-19. And that can go to anybody who wants to take it. Thank you. Dr. Anjan, if you could answer it, please. Yes, Governor Paul, there's no data or studies out there that I'm aware of through any ventilation system. We still think it's or have information that is spread by respiratory droplets. The information that it's as contagious as the chicken pox that you said, and it was because of the information that is out there that, you know, as you stated, not just another or two people as to eight people, is that it's highly contagious from the information that we have, but there's no indication that it's spreading through a ventilation system or anything. So it's just the respiratory droplets that we know of as the other variants that we have. So we want people to stay home when they're sick, to wash their hands and to keep the distance if they're sick or if they know that they're infectious at this time. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Paul. Next to Charles Young with WV News. Hi, all this is Charles Young with WV News. Um, my question is about our latest incentive program. Um, Governor, do you have an idea of how much overall we plan to spend on round number two and where those funds will come from? I, I know you previously said that we used, you know, leftover care funds to for round number one. Are we gonna be doing the same for this next round? Thank you. Charles, we are, and, and I would estimate that this is about $6 million. You know, I don't, I don't have that number exactly in front of me, but uh, you know, six to eight million dollars. But we've got the money, and uh, and 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 we're talking to all kinds of different businesses. You know, that are going to supply the stuff, and and so uh, you know, we we've got the money. It's not going to take from anybody or or, or any bucket and everything. But uh, we've got the money to do it. It's just a matter of. Gosh, you know, you and I both know it's, it's kind of a shame to think that we've got to do something to incentivize people to, to get vaccinated, to be able to save their lives or their families or their friends or whomever it may be. You know, it, it's kind of a shame, you know, to think we've got to we've got to go to that. But uh, but we do anything and everything we can to get people across the uh, across the finish line. So uh, so, yeah, we've got the dollars. We'll 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 just keep keep at it. All right, thanks, Charles. Next to Tori Yorgi with WSAZ. 
Hi, everyone. This is Tori Orgy with WSAZ. Um, thanks for taking my question. I actually wanted to ask, uh, I know General Hoyer just spoke about the age numbers, the average age numbers decreasing uh, from what we were used to in the last surge. I wanted to ask, um, I know you all spoke about listing vaccinated versus unvaccinated uh, for the people who are hospitalized currently. Can we expect to see that anytime here soon listed on the website? And can we also expect to uh, maybe see age brackets as far as hospitalizations go, just so we have an idea of who's being hospitalized because we're hearing a lot of um, children potentially might be being ha hospitalized this time around, but we obviously need to confirm that through the website. Thank you. I think General Hoyer, can you do this, sir? Uh, yes, sir, Governor. I'll rely on Secretary Crouch to help. Uh, Tori, we continue to work with the hospital association to pull data together uh, related to vaccinated versus unvaccinated. So we'll have more on that. And I know Bill's team at DHHR and others have been working on uh, being able to put more data on. But what uh, we need to work is to make sure that we provide you with uh, appropriate and accurate data as opposed to just uh, pushing things on to the site. But I, I'll, I'll turn it to Bill for other comments. Thank you, Tim. Hi, Tori. Uh, the uh, data you're referring to in terms of hospitalization is actually not at DHHR, but it is uh, hospital association data. We're working closely with them. We get a report every day. We're beginning to get better information in terms of uh, age breakdowns of individuals in the hospital and breakthroughs. As you know, we place the breakthrough information on the dashboard uh, in, in terms of cases and in terms of deaths. Uh, it's very difficult to get that count uh, daily from hospitals in terms of how many individuals with COVID are in their hospital and how many are, are uh, already vaccinated or, or not yet vaccinated. So, but we are working on that. And again, we try to keep the dashboard um, uh, moving and, and add to it information uh, that we can that makes it more beneficial for folks out there. So good question. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tori. Next to David Beard with the Dominion Post. Hi. Um, I wanted to clarify the dis distinctions between the two different uh, booster efforts that are going on. Uh, the first one is for the immunocompromised. And uh, does that apply to any age or only 60 and up? Uh, and how do you get it? Um, do you just show up at a vaccine site? Do you need a doctor's note? And um, is there a time limit? Do you have to be eight months or six months out from your first vaccine if you're in a compromise to get that? And the other one is the one that'll start, well, it's tentatively set to start September 20th. Uh, for I guess anybody who's been vaccinated, but again, is there an age limit on that? Is it 60 and up? And again, uh, how do you uh, go about getting that booster once that starts up? Do you have to have a doctor's note saying you're eight months out or just show up at a vaccine site with your card to prove you were vaccinated eight months ago? Um, I think that kind of covers it. Uh, I'd appreciate some uh, clarification on those. Thanks. Dr. Amjad or, or, or General Hoyer, you know, you guys, could you, could you fill in that? I, I can do it, but I, you can do it better now. Um, yes, Governor, I can start and I apologize if my thing is breaking up a little bit, but so the, the first part of your question for the third dose, it's for any age who's immunocompromised um, and you don't need a doctor's note, but when you go, you're basically um, going your word of honor, but you do have to do you have to do a test for it. So you're going to have to sign something at the pharmacy or say the health department. And you, you're basically someone who's of any age, but you're on say chemotherapy drugs or immunosuppressive drugs, or someone who's taking maybe prednisone daily for something. So you have to be on certain medications to qualify and, and saying that you are immunocompromised, but you don't need a doctor's note. So that's for the third dose that's currently going on now but that's for anyone who's 28 days after their second vaccine. Take your, your, your vaccine card to the pharmacy or the health department so they can see when you took the last dose. So that's for the current one that's out there now, the, um, the second, the third dose that they're calling it, or the, that's what they're calling it right now. To answer your second question for this booster dose that's coming out on September 20th, 
that that's a little bit different. So that's for anybody who's going to need this booster dose or the other shot, third shot. I mean, these words are being interchanged, unfortunately. You know, one that's given out right now for immunocompromised or the third dose, you um, would just show up with your vaccine card and you're self-attesting for that, um, David. But I don't know if General Hoyer has anything else to add to that. No, I think you covered it well, Diane. All right, thanks, David. Next to June Leffler with West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Good afternoon, panel. My question is for the governor. I am wondering um, what went into the decision to um, spend more money on this uh, vaccine incentive program. Um, you know, looking at the numbers, um, the vaccination rates during the last vaccine program. Um, numbers went down and didn't go back up until, um, you know, let's say early July um, when people were, you know, also becoming more kind of worried about the Delta variant. So just tell me what went into that decision um, and if there's going to be any sort of kind of evidence-based um, protocol to assessing the effectiveness of these um, vaccine incentive efforts. Well, June, I, I take real issue with you, you know, from uh, from the information that I've been given, and I think I'm given awfully good information, but from, from the date that we started the last campaign through when we ended the campaign, there was 180,000 people, 180,000 people that got vaccinated. You know, now, June, you know, I, I surely hope that people are hearing us, you know, with this Delta variant and, and moving towards getting themselves vaccinated. But we still got a bunch of folks out there, do we not, June? You know, and with those folks, we have hospitalizations, we have deaths, we have everything under the sun that's causing all kinds of issues all across the state. And more than anything, you know, we continue to lose great West Virginians. And, uh, and so really and truly the, the, the federal government provides these funds. And one of the things we can do with funds is just exactly what we're doing. And, uh, and I hate to say this, but this is a drop in the bucket. This is a drop in the bucket compared to what we can save and what we can do if we're more and more and more successful. So, uh, you know, it also helps our businesses in every way all across our state. From the standpoint of, you know, there's surely the businesses, you know, pick up a little bit of revenue from the prizes and stuff that we give away. But more than anything, in my opinion, what the businesses get is just this, is, you know, we hope and pray we're not going to get to a point in time. If we don't do something, June, we're going to end up, I mean, just think how it felt. Please, somebody tell me how it felt when we were all in masks. School was all virtual. Businesses were shut down all over the place. Do we really want to threaten ourselves to go back to something like that? I mean, really and truly? You know, are you kidding me how much revenue that we lost in this state and all the different things that happened? You know, uh, other states are doing exactly what we're doing and to, to, to throw out, you know, uh, the idea that this wasn't effective and didn't work, I mean, come on, June, come on. you got to be kidding me. All right, thank you, June. Governor, I'll turn it back to you. Well, um, the only thing I would, I would add is just this, is I hope to goodness that no one is sitting out there rooting for the incentive program on baby dog to fail. Because if the incentive program on baby dog is not successful, then that means we're not getting people vaccinated. And basically you're just sitting there then rooting for more people to die. Well, I'm gonna tell you any and everything on this planet no matter if it's having these briefings, if it's doing the baby dog stuff, 
if it is absolutely doing all the education that all the people are doing out there, the word of mouth, I don't care what it is. Whatever we can do to get more people vaccinated, we need to be doing it and we need to celebrate that. Celebrate that. We do not need in any way to root for death. How in the world can we set and applaud death? And so we got we to gotta continue to do all we can do, and, uh, and we're going to do just that. And we're going to beat this thing, too. We absolutely have done great in West Virginia in so many different ways. We're absolutely going to beat this thing. And then West Virginia is going to be just what it is over and over and over in the recent years. It's becoming more and more and more that shining star, that absolute treasure that everybody missed, the diamond in the rough that they missed ab absolutely over and over. We've always known. We've always known how good we are. We've always known what an incredible place West Virginia is. We just needed the world to know it. And now we, let, we see the world knowing it over and over and over. We're going to beat this thing. Absolutely, just stay together. That's what we got to do. Some way, somehow, we've got to all pull the rope together, and we're going to beat this thing. Thank you a bunch.